Welcome into the gates of destiny. God has sent Apostle Paul Kamba to midwife destinies of his people into manifestation. In a profound prophetic commissioning, God mandated his servant to release destinies that are long overdue. Marital destinies, career destinies, financial destinies. Now, let's get into the spiritual labor world. Bless you listeners of Gates of Destiny program. It's your host, Pastor Paul Kamba, the spiritual midwife ordained of God to actualize your destiny. I'm always reminding believers that every ministry gift has been designed by God to ensure that believers are edified, to ensure that believers are equipped for the work of the ministry. That is Ephesians chapter 4. The Bible said, He himself who ascended on high and also first descended in the lower parts of the earth that is Jesus Christ he gave gifts unto men they are gifts because we don't work for them they are given at the discretion of the giver the Bible says he gave some to be apostles, others prophets, others teachers, evangelists. These are different ministry offices. He said for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry to edify the body of Christ. Viewers, you are a member of the body of Christ and there is a ministry gift under which I'm ministering to equip you, to bring you revelations that will position you for fulfillment of destiny. I'm ministering on the subject of prophecy. What do you do for prophecy to become a reality? Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible we study and the manual of our existence is a prophetic book. Prophecy is any word you receive from God that is inspired by the Spirit of God. Prophecy is the anointed word that God sends his people to direct them, to show them what is ahead of them. Prophecy is the will of God. Prophecy is the mind of God. Prophecy is the plan of God. What God desires you to achieve, he sends it ahead of time to reposition you just in case the circumstances and the situations don't look like prophecy. You are designed to fix your eyes on what God says prophetically. Prophecy being the word of God, we see different people in the history of our forefathers in the Bible who received the prophecy. Prophecy being the word of God, it falls on four different grounds. In the book of Mark, he described it, chapter 4. Jesus was defining the different grounds upon which prophecy falls. And he said there are those who receive prophecy and for them the condition of their heart is the ground along the path. The Bible says those who receive prophecy that their heart is a ground that is along the path. The birds of the air come immediately and they pick prophecy. It disappears immediately. The second ground is the people who receive prophecy prophecy. The Bible defines them as people who are on rocky ground. Rocky ground meaning there is the ground that has little soil. When prophecy falls on their heart they get excited but before long when the cares of life will invade them, they will wither. They forget how to actualize prophecy. And the third ground are the people who receive prophecy. The Bible defines it as those that are among the thorns. The thorns grow with prophecy, but close to bringing forth fruit, the thorns begin to prick the fruit and it dies without producing. Then the fourth category are those who receive prophecy, whose hearts are the good ground. They receive prophecy, they enforce the fulfillment of it, and they begin to produce the harvest of it. Viewers of Gates of Destiny program, it is my prayer, even as you are watching, that your heart becomes a good ground upon which prophecy is going to be actualized. Prophecy is the will of God for you. In this ministry of Gates of Destiny, every time we do hold our main event, where at the start of every month, we take three days of fasting and prayer in response to the book of Psalms chapter 63 when David spoke by the Spirit of God 
that early will I seek you to see your power and your glory. David was positioning himself early to seek God in this ministry at our headquarter branch. Early every month from the first to the third, we take Esther fasting, three days of no food, no water, to seek the face of God, to enforce the plan of God for our lives. In the process of the PUSH program, we call it PUSH, pray until something happens. It's always a prophetic environment. We have people who come in and prophetically, I begin to prophesy as I'm led by the Spirit of God. It's a gift of God. And those prophecies, people receive them. People who put value on the prophetic word, people who know what to do when they receive prophecy, prophecies have been actualized. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be viewing this program now, but there are prophecies on your life. Maybe a man or a woman of God gave you a prophecy. Maybe you received it through a service. Sometimes you are preaching in the process of one hour of receiving the word of God. There is a prophecy that comes on you. Many people receive prophecy even through their dreams. Joseph received the prophecy over his destiny through a dream. Remember Joseph shared the prophetic dream to his brothers who hated him the more. He shared his prophecy with his father who rebuked him because prophecy is channeled towards the plan of God for your life. Joseph was ordained a ruler. He was a leader and the vision came prophetically through his dream. And from that very time, his destiny began to be channeled by prophecy. Ladies and gentlemen, there are things that we do to enforce the fulfillment of prophecy. There are different steps that a believer must go through to actualize prophecy. Prophecy cannot be fulfilled just because it is the will of God. I'm beating a religious mindset as I'm speaking now. It is a religious conviction that if it is the will of God, then it will come to pass. No, it does not automatically happen like that. Even as we are speaking now, there are people who are dying in car accidents. There are people who are dying in the hospitals, in the intensive care units, who have prophecy on their life, who never actualized them. Prophecy delivers on mysteries. Viewers of Gates of Destiny, as I continue to explain the mystery of prophecy, every word of God will be fulfilled by the response of the recipient. It takes the plan of God for your life and you taking responsibility to fulfill it. Every prophetic word you treat lightly will not be fulfilled. Let's look into different people in the scriptures that received the prophecy. Let's start with our Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Luke chapter 1 from verse 26, we read about the prophecy that came to Mary. And the Bible says, now... In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Verse 29, but when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what man of greeting was this. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of the king. Kingdom, there will be no end. 
that was a prophecy. The prophets came to Mary to channel and direct her destiny. Ladies and gentlemen, viewing the program Gates of Destiny, every prophetic word is designed by God to focus your attention. That's why the scriptures tell us that prophecy did not come by the will of men. Holy men spoke as they were moved by the Spirit of God. Holy men spoke scripture. Every scripture is gathered by the Spirit of God. And the same Spirit that gathered scripture still speaks through men who are baptized in the Holy Ghost for the direction of the church. It is the Lord who spoke to me prophetically in this very ministry. As you're you seeing it, it's bathing destinies of God's people. That is a prophetic mandate. Everyone who comes under the influence of this ministry, whatever is the plan of God for your life, is actualized. It's a mandate. It is the plan of God. Since 2008, everyone who comes under the influence of this ministry, your marital destiny, Destiny, your career destiny, your financial destiny is enabled to be brought forth. Every ministry has a mandate. The plan of God for you will be actualized. Even as I'm ministering to you the word of God, as you are viewing this program, something is moving in your spirit because the plan of God for your life must become a reality. And the angel left heaven on a mission to deliver prophecy to Mary. Mary was did not know what he, she was running a normal life she was a normal girl who lived in Nazareth she was doing ordinary things she was engaged to Joseph life was moving normally until God sent prophecy that redirected Mary's life Every time you receive a word of prophecy, it can shift your life from the things that are normal to things that are supernatural. And Mary wondered at what the angel said. And then she goes ahead to ask, but how shall this thing happen? Because prophecy does not deliver on the resources of a human being. Prophecy being the mind of God, you need divine resources to actualize it. There is no prophecy that is fulfilled in the region of your ability. That's why on this program where we are teaching you how to enforce the fulfillment of prophecy, we are going to draw from the resources of the Holy Spirit. And Mary asked the angel, but how shall it come to pass? And Gabriel told Mary, don't worry, the spirit of the Most High will overshadow you. And when the angel told Mary the process through which the prophets will be actualized, Mary did the first step towards prophecy. She believed. Believing is the first step to the fulfillment of prophecy. And she said, be it unto me according to the word. That is how prophecy is fulfilled. Immediately she considered the prophecy the angel left back to heaven. And that began the series of the coming of Jesus Christ. There is a prophecy that must come. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to notice with me that from Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, when God came down after the enemy lied to Adam and Eve and they disobeyed the plan of God, God spoke to to the snake in the garden of Eden and told him that the seed of the woman shall crush your head and you'll strike his heel and the devil knows that the word of God cannot fail from Genesis chapter 3 up until the angel left heaven to come to Mary Satan has been opening his eyes to figure out when is this seed of the woman that God promised coming he was always looking for ways of, of, of not noticing when he comes to be able to destroy him Ladies and gentlemen, every prophet in the Bible was seeing in the spirit and was moved by the spirit of God and they kept on prophesying. Prophet Moses spoke about Jesus. He said, there will come one among you 
him you will hear. And the prophet Jeremiah spoke. And the prophet Daniel spoke. And every prophet, major and minor, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, will pr prophesy the coming of Jesus. The chief of them being Isaiah. Isaiah went ahead and began to prophesy that unto us a child is born. He was under the influence of the Holy Spirit and began to give prophecies that unto us a son is given and unto us a child is born. The government shall be on his shoulders. Upon the increase of this government there shall be no end. His name shall be called Wonderful. His name shall be called Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. These are prophecies that were channeling the coming of Jesus Christ. And the Bible said in Luke chapter 11 and he said there shall come forth a road out of the stems of Jesse and his name shall be called Wonderful. These are prophecies up until Malachi, prophecies about the coming of Jesus were given. Ladies and gentlemen, however good the plan of God was for the coming of Jesus, there needed to be someone to enforce the fulfillment of prophecy. The subject of this ministering to you now is how do you actualize prophecy? Ladies and gentlemen, we stand in the book of Luke chapter number 2. That there was a man called Simeon and another woman called Anna in the book of Luke chapter number 2. The Bible explains from verse 25, Luke chapter 2, 25. The Bible says, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. There was a man called Simeon who was devout that defines a lifestyle of fasting and prayer Simeon was a Jewish man who lived in Jerusalem who was designed by God to enforce the fulfillment of the prophecy that was spoken about from Genesis chapter 3 and when you take on responsibility to actualize prophecy, the Spirit of God will rest upon you. And the Spirit of God came upon Simeon and revealed to him that he will never see death until he sees the consolation. Consolation means the coming of the Messiah. Israel was prophetically designed to be consoled by the coming of the Messiah. Consolation was the mission of Simeon. He was standing in the gap for prophecy to come to terms with experience. To use a more biblical language, the Bible says he stood until the word became flesh and dwelt in their midst. Simeon was revealed, just in case there are people watching this program who don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah, then it means because it had been revealed to Simeon that he would never see death until he sees the Lord's Christ. If you do not believe Jesus is the Messiah, then it means the oldest man is in Israel. He must be above 3,000 years because it was revealed to him that he would never see death until he sees the, the Savior. And because the Savior came, and the Bible said by the instant of the Spirit of God, when Mary and Joseph carried baby Jesus to the temple, the Bible says the Spirit prompted Simeon to go meet with them in church. And when he saw them, can you imagine, how do you carry your baby whom you've not explained to anyone? And somebody meets you at church and he carries the baby from your hands and began to bless the name of the Lord. That happened to Mary and Joseph. And Mary and Joseph wondered at what happened to this man. A total stranger. They never knew him. Yet he came to church and picked the baby. Let's look into the Bible and see the words that he spoke. The Bible says in Luke chapter number 2. From verse 27. So he came by the spirit into the temple. 
And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God. And he said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to prophecy, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of the, all the people, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. These words are spoken by Simeon when he saw baby Jesus because he was moved by the Spirit. Spirit. He had lived his life devout, fasting and prayer, enforcing the prophecy that every prophet in the Bible had spoken about. Ladies and gentlemen, every prophecy on your life as you are watching this program will only become flesh when you engage the process. Let me take you to the next one called Anna. The Bible said in, let's go to the book of Luke chapter number 2 from verse number 36. This is another prophetess who in connection with Simeon, they were enforcing the fulfillment of prophecy. The Bible said, now there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years who did not depart from the temple but served God with the fastings and prayers night and day. And coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Simeon and Anna enforced the fulfillment of prophecy. Let's go to the book of John chapter 1, verse 1. The Bible said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the word was God. In the beginning was the word. That word is prophecy. In the beginning. Every beginning there is a word. If there is a beginning of your restoration, I send a word to you. The beginning of supernatural favor, it begins with a word. The beginning of your turn around begins with a word. I'm sending a word to you, viewer, of gates of destiny. In the beginning, in the beginning, the spiritual foundation of beginning is the word. There was a word about our redemption. That word is the prophecy. It could not be fulfilled until somebody engaged the mystery that is required to actualize it. Now, from verse 1 of John chapter 1, jump with me to verse 14. And the Bible said, And the word became flesh, and it dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the first begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In the beginning was the word. Then verse 14 says, and the word became flesh. Now, if you have been following from the beginning of this program, you will know that there is a process through which the word becomes flesh. John is summarizing by the Spirit of God that what began as a promise of God, what began as a prophecy of God, what began God redeeming mankind in Genesis chapter 3, that was the word. It took thousands of years and the word became flesh. Somebody had to enforce the word to become flesh. Are you with me? If you are viewing this program, there is a process. It will live in a generation, ladies and gentlemen, viewing gates of destiny, where believers who receive prophecies of ministries, prophecies of running corporates, prophecies of being great politicians, they keep postponing prophecy to their, gen to their following generation, to their children, to their children's children, because no one has brought a revelation to them of how the prophecy becomes flesh to dwell in their midst. Don't postpone prophecy. Engage the mysteries I'm teaching on this program. 
program to actualize destiny. In the beginning was the word. The word became flesh. How did the word become flesh? And Simeon, they were devout and prayerful, waiting on the word to become flesh. Every prophecy delivers when you enforce the fulfillment. So step number one, when you get prophecy, believe it. Step number two, go to the next level to enforce the prophecy to fulfillment. We see from Genesis to Revelation, men and women who made prophecy a reality. Turn with me to another man called Elijah. In the book of 1 Kings chapter number 18, verse number 1, a word came to Elijah. Let's read it. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 1. Bible says, and it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, go present yourself to Ahab and I will send rain on the earth. That was prophecy. Go present yourself to Ahab and I will send rain. God spoke to Elijah. Any ordinary believer would think that when Elijah would go and stand before the king Ahab, rain would come. Elijah went and presented himself to Ahab, there was no rain. Elijah called fire from heaven, there was no rain. Elijah killed 450 prophets of Baal, there was no rain. Israel had come back to the fear of the true living God, there was no rain. Up until verse 41, the Bible says, And Elijah told Ahab, Go and eat and drink. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And Elijah went to Mount Carmel. He went to enforce the fulfillment of prophecy. Everything else had happened that glorifies God, but prophecy had not been fulfilled. The one thing God promised Elijah when he would show up to Ahab had not happened. Ladies and gentlemen, it is possible to go to a meeting where God is doing miracles. It is possible to go in a place where people are testifying, but when your own testimony is not established, God gave a word to Elijah. When you show up to Ahab, I will send rain. Miracles happened the whole day. People were rejoicing under the power of God, but the rain had not come. Ladies and gentlemen, what is that prophecy over your family? What is the prophecy over your marriage? Is there a prophecy over your business? It is time to enforce it. You can even join us from the first to the third of next month in the labor world of destiny. People carry their blankets, people get leave, and they decide to come in the place where God has ordained in his name. God has recorded his name in this ministry. Every time there is a prophecy that is long overdue, you engage the mystery of enforcing the fulfillment. Thank you for watching Gates of Destiny program with me, Pastor Paul Kamba. I'm inviting you on the 1st to the 3rd of July. Every prophecy that has been lingering in the spirit that belongs to you, the Holy Spirit is going to rest upon you. The anointing of God will come to you through the medium of fasting and prayer. Everyone that has a prophecy, this is your push. You cannot sit down and wait for things to happen. You're going to make things happen by first making a decision. The intercessors here in the midwife chambers will be praying or on the 1st to the 3rd of July, the midwife chambers are open right here in Eden Vale on Van Riebeck Avenue inside Eden Mall Shopping Center at DMCC Church. Your destiny will not recover from this push program. As everyone is testifying, so your testimony shall be established. To send your prayer request, visit www.dmccministries.org or you may call us on 11 454 Four, one. See you in the push of July from the 1st to the 3rd of July. Your testimony shall be established. Viewers, I know God 
through the words I'm ministering, is touching and changing your life. The evidence of grace is changing lives. This program will be running on this particular station, this particular time. Keep watching Gates of Destiny program. So we thank God. We love you. We believe you have been blessed with this program. Keep watching Gates of Destiny. Your life will never be the same again. See you on the same station at the same time.